Hello everyone, I'm David Gonzalez. Thank you for joining me on this Mystical VR webinar. I'm going to try to explain you many or all of the features of Mystical VR in a quick way so that you can get on and play with the software for yourselves. Um, uh, first I'm going to tell you who am I. Um, I've been working uh, as a freelance or, uh, or contracted with Mystica for the last uh, almost 10 years. Um, I've been doing color grading and stereo 3D and as you already know uh, when once you get your uh, VR headset on you fall in love with this new uh, way of telling stories that's what happened to me and then I jumped into pushing uh, for uh, newer and better VR tools and here am I now showing you uh, these tools. Um, what is uh, Mystica VR? Uh, Mystica VR is a real-time optical flow stitching solution based on Mystica technology. Um, uh, that's a quick way of describing it, but through this webinar you will see what we can do with Mystica VR. And I have a guide of what you will see. First, we're going to focus into showing you uh, the interface and how to interact with the software. Uh, we create projects on timelines, and this is very important because Mystica is organized uh, in a different way of, uh, compared with other stitching softwares. We have projects, and projects can hold timelines so that you can organize your project uh, more clearly. We will load media and apply presets to that media, and we will also uh, view how to use external stitching tools like PTGUI or Hugin uh, to create our initial stitch. Uh, once we have our initial stitch, we will uh, uh, start improving it by color matching it, uh, by uh, improving the alignment with some uh, optical flow tools as Mystica has, aligning the horizon, adjusting the scenes using edge points and the white parameter, and at the end, uh, then we will have uh, time for your questions. I'll try to answer them all. Uh, so let's quickly get on with the software. We're going to start with the interface. Um, so I already have a project and after I show you the interface we will start with a blank project and you will see it from the how to stitch shot from beginning to end. Uh, but first, uh, Mystica is organized in three different tabs. We can see that much more clearly if we go to Window and click on to Auto Hide tabs. And we see we have the Clips stack, the Visual Editor and the Camera Controls. Um, the Clips stack uh, is the place in which all the cameras that uh, contribute to that particular shot are hold. So this was shot using a Freedom 360 rig, so we have six cameras in here. On the left of the camera we have the audio selection. So whatever uh, camera I click, this will be the audio that will be sent whenever we export the shot. On the, to the right of the name we have the offset controls. Uh, used for syncing the footage. Uh, in this case this was shot in sync so there is no information in here. You can offset them manually or you can use syncing tools that we have down here. Uh, so I will go more in deep into this, all these uh, four tabs that we have in here once we get into the uh, operation uh, part of the webinar but we can sync we can stitch with using different methods, presets or loading projects from uh, PTGUI or Hugin. We can color match either on a particular frame or in every step of 100 frames, for example. Uh, and then we can improve our alignment uh, by image analysis, by uh, moving the scenes from one place to another. Uh, and that's the main function of the clips stack. Uh, one cool thing is that you can move and reorganize the interface as you want, so I can collapse these two tabs into one, or bring it back to where it was, and to that position. I'm used to work on this kind of uh, configuration. If you have several configurations that you want to save, you can always uh, uh, set it and then go to Window, Layout, and save a layout. Uh, same thing for loading layouts. Just window layout, load the layout that you saved previously and that would be it. Uh, second part of the interface will be the visual editor, which uh, consists of two different parts. The main one is a representation of the work we're doing right now. 
uh, the frame we are stitching. Uh, we can just right click and drag to move it around. Uh, we can also zoom in and out by clicking the zoom control in here or using the mouse wheel. Uh, this represents the shot we are right now. Down here on the storyboard uh, we have a representation of our whole timeline. So I have three shots on this particular timeline. Uh, I can move to one shot before just pressing that button. If you hover uh, over any button for a couple of seconds you will see uh, what this button is about. So if I want to move to the previous I just click there and if I want to move to the next click there. But whenever you have uh, many shots you may need a quicker way to move. So if I want to jump to the first shot straight away, I can just shift and click on that shot and I will jump directly to that shot. Shift and click on any snapshot on the storyboard. Uh, to move the storyboard whenever you have a lot of shots, again, right click and drag. Or even you can drag this bar down here. Uh, then we have our time representation which counts on frames and then we have the shadow controls and the range selector so I can set an in and an out for a particular shot and this is the range that I will be exporting whenever I decide to, expo to export the shot. I can move frame by frame backwards or forwards, I can play backwards, stop and play forwards and I can navigate straight to one position, maybe second 20, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 20, 0, 0, and then I'll be in that position. These are the shuttle controls, and then we have some other display controls in this area. The first one is the storyboard. Some occasions I want to have a bigger desktop, so I want to hide the storyboard, just fill my, my working space with the image. I can bring it back by just clicking. We also have, we also, we also can at any point during the stitching, we can go into mosaic mode to see all the different cameras that contribute to the shot and warped as they were shot. Uh, another uh, viewing mode will be the one input only. This is very useful for fisheye lenses for calibrating the, calibrating the center of the, of the lens and I will show you that later. But if you want to find something on certain camera, you can just uh, click on the one camera mode or calibration mode and cycle through the layers just by selecting them. Uh, one of the most useful ones is the VR view mode so that you can see the image as if you were using a headset. Just drag around And then we start to see some information about the cameras. The first one will be the camera overlay. Uh, any camera that is selected will show us our limits in blue, our, uh, the center of the camera in yellow. I can either select here in the stack or I can click on the image itself and it will select. As you can see, whenever I click on any camera, if you look into that part down here in the input cameras, the parameters are being updated. So that will be the way of manually modifying the position of the camera. I click on one camera, go down here and modify its parameters. Next uh, interface will be the feather overlay. So this represents the edges of the, of the cameras in the stitch and then the feather. So the edge is the red line and then I'm feathering from green line to green line from one camera to the other. I can combine that with the camera overlay. So from camera 6 to camera 2 I'm feathering from this point to this point. Uh, you can also see the feather overlay in the VR view mode um, so that you can see if there are any stitching errors on the seams. Uh, next overlay will be a grid, extremely useful for uh, uh, aligning the horizon. And this we already seen before, zoom controls, I can zoom in as much as I want, zoom out, I want to just reset it to fit it to the screen, and then the next one will be just to center it, so if I'm on that uh, position, I want to center the image but keep the zoom that I'm using, I just click that button. So I 
recent damage. And then last one will be the quick view, which drops the resolution uh, by half and should speed up things if you are searching for a point or if you want to quickly review your shot. Um, so that's a resolution change in the project. Um, down here we have the camera controls separated in different folders or different tabs. I can close any of them by double clicking on its name, open it by double clicking again, or I can use this button here, collapse or uncollapse. You can move them, making them smaller or bigger. So arrange as you want the interface. Uh, we have different parameters in different parts of the image. I'll show you, I'll explain you the parameters a bit later. Uh, that will be the main interface and then the last one I want to show you is the export interface. And without exporting anything, I'm just going to go into File, Export and show you how it works. The main thing we have to choose is if I, I want to export the current shot or all the shots in my timeline. If I export all the shots in my timeline, it will create a movie per shot. Uh, then I can choose the format I want, MP4 as uh, H.264, H.265. Uh, I can choose a Mystica format if I'm going to finish this piece on a Mystica Ultima Suite, for example, um, with many different uh, formats inside, inside of the Mystica format. I can go to DPX or to ProRes. Then as I click one audio, I can still see, say, I don't want to import that audio or I want to export it as a separate file. So you will have, in this case, a .mov file containing ProRes and a, a WAV file containing the audio. Or I can merge it with the movie. So one file for video and audio. Give it a name, allocation, and hit export. Um, so that's a really quick run through the interface. Uh, hold your questions for the end of the webinar if you have one. Um, we're going to move now into the fun part of the webinar and start stitching shots. So I'm going to create a project. Uh, I'm going to bring up the project window and create a new project which is called webinar uh, 2017 06-27 I'm gonna make it 2k and 29.97 okay so now I'm already on that uh, project you can see it up here on the on the title window and I want a new sequence don't want to save anything there and this is what you will find whenever you open Mystica uh, what we're gonna do first is load uh, some footage we're gonna start with the simplest one, so just bring up, I like to do it with the Windows Explorer because I find it really easy. So I navigate to my VR uh, media folder and we're going to bring something simple, just a Gear 360 shot. Um, move somewhere else and this is how it looks. Uh, in Mystica there are two options for stitching. It, it, it either can be a known rig by Mystica VR so that you can load a preset or if it's not known by Mystica VR you can pre-build the stitch in PTGUI or Hugin and then load it into Mystica. We have a preset for Samsung Gear so just load preset and find the Samsung Gear 360 open. Uh, okay so just uh, with one click we got a quite good stitch and I can show you a couple of parameters in here. Um, so let's go into VR view mode and activate the feather overlay, move to the overlay itself and now I can deactivate it. You can see there that there is some double image. I can only have a perfect stitching as a set, at, at, at a certain distance. Uh, and I can choose that distance by converging. So with the converge parameter done here in options, I can choose if I want to prioritize my stitch on the far back of the mountain, or if I want to prioritize the stitch on that rock there. So I want to leave it there in the rock, and then 
let optical flow uh, fix any other issues. So if I just click on use optical flow, it will warp the remaining pixels to its, uh, to its position. You can also quickly, if we show, if we deactivate the VR view mode and activate the feather overlay, we can quickly reduce or increase the feather between the images just by dragging the stitch feather. Sometimes you want to move faster than, uh, than one point at a time. Right now I'm going from 40, 41, 42, 43. Uh, we have some modifiers on the keyboard, so dragging without any modifiers will move one by one. Uh, if I click shift, we'll move ten by ten. You can see there, I'm clicking shift now. Uh, if you need it to go faster, you can click control and we'll move hundred by hundred. Uh, and then if you want to be more precise, you can click alt and go by 0 0.1. Uh, and that doesn't stop there. You can click Ctrl and Alt to go 0 0.01 and Shift and Alt to go 0 0.001. Uh, the, the amount of precision that you want depend, will depend on the parameter you, that you are changing at the moment. Uh, you can always right click and set it to the default value on every parameter. Uh, I know it feels like a lot of modifiers, Shift, Control, Alt, Alt and Control and Alt and Shift, but once you start using the software, you will find that it's uh, really natural to change between one or the other. You will build uh, muscle memory and, 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 and change from one modifier to another really quickly. Um, let's move on to a bit more complicated shot. So we're going to load another shot. Just go back to my Explorer and I want to load a Freedom 360 shot. This one for example. Uh, and now I have two different options. If I drag it here, uh, it says I'm going to add these six cameras to the current stack. And that's not what I want to do. But if I go to the storyboard, I, want, I will create a new stack with the drag files, which is what I want. Uh, sorry. So now I have two shots on my timeline. It automatically defaults to the mosaic view so that you can uh, check check if everything is correct. First thing we have to do in Freedom 360 will be to sync the footage. For that, we're going to use Audio Sync because we don't have any time codes on these uh, shots. Uh, and I'm going to set myself into the around frame number 1000 user range of a thousand frames and take a sample of four frames. Uh, then if I click OK, Mystica will compare that four frame sample in the 1000 frame range and offer me with some offsets. Uh, confidence is quite good, so I can just click OK and check, just hit play and check if it seems correct. That camera and that camera seem correct, that one and that one seem correct as well. That seems to be correct, so I can move somewhere else and then uh, load the preset for the Freedom 360. So I'll go to my clip stack, right click, load preset. Find the GoPro Freedom 360 and click open. And with the Freedom 360, which is a great rig, uh, we sometimes find an issue, which is that the cameras aren't placed in the rig in the same order that the preset has been built. So we have a quick fix for that, which is if you show the camera overlay, you can just drag and drop from one place to another from the rig. So I see there's the leg of the tripod here, so this camera is going to go here. I see there are some heads there that should be matching to those ones, so camera 2 is going to go here. And then I see some grass there that should be matching that grass there, and that goes there. So this is a quick way of solving an issue uh, that custom uh, build rigs uh, create. 
Um, now the, f the next step will be realigning the horizon to get it to a normal position. So for that I'm just going to hit control on my keyboard and drag until I'm happy with it. Somewhere around there. Maybe bring them more centered. And what I usually do is quickly go to color and hit match color. The only concern that you ha need to have when uh, color matching is to set the gamma curve correctly. If you're working with presets uh, like the GoPro Freedom 360, we are already giving you that gamma curve correctly, which is the GoPro Protein. But if you're working with any other camera, you can just select its gamma curve, which will make the color matching much more precise. Once we have the color matching done, uh, we can go into improving the alignment. So if we see and zoom in in here, we see there are some mismatches. Uh, if I go to positions, I can hit improve alignment and what improve alignment will do is it will analyze the overlapping areas of the image and try to match the pixels together without the use of optical flow. So it's, it will analyze one frame and improve the, positions, the positioning of the cameras. Just improve alignment and now that is much better. We can see it on the whole uh, on the whole stitch that it has worked a bit better. Uh, we can now redo the match color because we have new positions now and it will be a bit more accurate. And if Mystica fails to match perfectly the color match, we can either increase the feather or just manually adjust that particular camera. So what I like to do is reduce the filler to zero, zoom in on one of the edges, and selecting camera four, I'm going to modify the parameters. This is uh, one time in which I will be using the modifiers for color grading as well. So I can click Alt and drag the temperature control to precisely move the slider too much. So I want to add some green and reduce the exposure a bit and that matches much better. So that change has been applied to the whole duration of the shot. Uh, once we've done that and we're happy with our color match, uh, we can always check it on the via view mode. Uh, we want to adjust the feather of the stitch. Uh, you can just click and drag until you're happy with the feather. I'll say 30 is a good point. And then uh, fix some other errors that are caused by parallax uh, by using optical flow. So we have double image here or even trifold image in there because there are three cameras converging at that position. The hands are also having double image the shirt and the face. So just uh, by one click, uh, activating optical flow, all those pixels go into their, uh, into their position. Uh, you can see the change there. Um, so that will be the shot uh, stitched properly. I can set in and out points at any point or uh, I can jump back into the mosaic view or the one view mode at any point and go back to my stage at any point. Uh, what else can we do to improve this stitching? What I usually do is try to avoid uh, seam lines on the faces of the main characters. So I would like to move away the seam from this face and for doing that I'm going to reduce the feather um, and then I'm going to select the camera and add an edge point. So what edge point does is like a little ball that I can move around and it will push the seam away from the edge point. So now uh, his face in a, is in a safe position and the seam line and all the optical flow is going through his shoulder which is not 
uh, as critical as going through his face. Um, if you want to uh, make the edge point bigger or smaller, you can just shift and drag to make it smaller or bigger. Another uh, part of the image that I want to protect is that area there, another face on a seam line. So click on camera 5, go to positions, add edge point, and I'm going to make it smaller. I have deactivated optical flow, so meanwhile I'm working and dragging uh, the software reacts a bit faster, and then once I'm done, I can reactivate optical flow. Okay, so we're gonna import another shot. In this case, we wanna wanna show you how to import uh, time lapses, so image sequences. Um, this uh, is a shot that New Horizons uh, shot on the Open uh, Madrid Tennis. Uh, so I just need to navigate to the folder, to the particular folder, and then again drag it to my storyboard. Right now, we need to drag. Uh, one by one, the cameras. We cannot drag the top folder. So once you've drawn the drag the first one and created a new stack, dragging it on the storyboard, all the other ones will be dragged to the clip stack. So navigate to camera three, camera four, camera five, and camera six. You can go back. And I have all my cameras loaded. This was shot with an Omni, with an Omni uh, rig, for which we also have a preset. So just go to load preset and GoPro Omni. Move to a frame uh, that we like and hide all the overlays. We see there are some mismatches. Also, the color is not properly, so I recommend you first do color match because that will help uh, the improve alignment to be more accurate. So after that, improve alignment. And there we go. Um, I can recenter it now. Maybe bring up the grid overlay so that I have a bit more control over the horizon. <clears throat> and that's a quick way of doing uh, time lapses. No need to convert them to, uh, to to movies or anything. Just drag and drop all the first or any of the clips of the sequence, any of the frames of the sequence, and it will load them all. Um, we're going to load another shot, uh, go back to, for example, I'm going to show you how to align the horizon, so this shot you've already seen it when we were working on the interface, this shot uh, was shot by Cita Films 360 uh, in Dubai, I believe, uh, thanks for sharing the footage with us. Uh, so again, it's a Freedom 360, so um, I want to load a preset uh, again, I need to reorganize the cameras. You see how the cameras never uh, end in the same place. Sometimes I need to move them all. Sometimes I just need to move one of them. Uh, now I'm going to move the horizon. And again, uh, I always do a quick color match, a quick improve alignment. And sometimes after improving the alignment, another color match can help because now we have better edges there. You saw that that difference uh, disappeared there. Uh, in this case, I'm going to move some of the parts of the stitch uh, manually, because I don't want that, even I can even if I can fix it with optical flow, uh, that building will be bending. So I, don't, I want that line to be completely straight. I'm going to reduce the further to zero. Select camera four. And now here, I'm going to move it to one side or the other. So 
that way the I'm not applying that much optical flow in that area and all the optical flow will fall into a close distance instead of the far distance which is where I need the buildings to be straight. Uh, talking about buildings being straight, we see that the horizon isn't perfectly aligned. Uh, you can either use the grid tool, but sometimes I find it easier to use another tool that we can uh, bring up by just uh, holding Alt and clicking on the image. If I click, you can see I have three different crosses. There is one cross where I'm clicking, and another two at a certain distance to the left and to the right. This um, allows me to center two different straight lines on the stitch, so I'm going to just click Alt, click and drag to make that line straight and then go to the position where the cross to the left is which is that other building so now I'm gonna go to that building and make it straight as well if you make this on the distance that Mystica VR is showing you the whole of the stitch will be perfectly aligned and I find that as a really quick way of aligning the horizon uh, when you have vertical lines. Uh, next step will be to increase the feather again. We see there are some mismatches in here, uh, but just by activating the optical flow, they bend together into the right place. Also on the close distance, like that part in there, we can hide the error a bit. Or even in the guy that is crossing the scene, like that. Uh, so let's load uh, another uh, another rig that is uh, being used a lot lately, uh, which is the set cam. Uh, I'm gonna use some footage that uh, that uh, Jamie Pence from Video Bread sent us as well. Uh, so I'm just gonna drag them again on the storyboard. Once they are loaded, I always go into mosaic mode, and the only thing I have to do is to right click and load the preset. Uh, we keep supporting more and more cameras. If you have one rig that you use a lot uh, and you want us to build and include the preset on Mystica VR, just send us some uh, footage and we will create it for you. Uh, back to loading the set can as one, double click and um, I want to show you one particular thing about uh, fisheye lenses so you know that the set cam shows you the circle of the fisheye. Uh, if I go back and reduce the feather, you can see how the stitch is inaccurate. Uh, the preset seems to be inaccurate. But actually the preset is really accurate. The problem is that the, when, when the camera manufacturers uh, build the uh, cameras, they don't always center the center of the lens with the center of the CCD. This isn't a criticism or anything, this is just how it's how it's created and it's not a problem so we can fix it in, in Mystica VR really quickly. You just need to activate the one input uh, view in combination with the camera and you will get this circle. The idea is that you with Alt and drag make that circle small enough so that it can fit in there and try to center it. This is actually, if you look down here, this is updating the offsets of the lens um, to the CCD, so making the preset much more accurate. You just cycle through the lenses by centering them. There's no need to adjust the size. This is just a guide for you to be able to center them. Um, just set it in the right place. And once you get out of the one view, without touching anything, without applying optical flow and without improving the alignment, we see that the uh, stitch has increased its accuracy quite a lot. Uh, this will help us with different things. This will help us to have a clean zenith and nadir, and this will help optical flow to not be uh, forced to warp the pixels too much. Um, so next step in here, uh, as all the cameras are uh, synced in terms of uh, white balance and temperature, we don't need to do a color match, but we do need to do an improve alignment. I just click on improve alignment and let's see how it works. So you saw that area is matching much better. 
that area is almost perfect. Uh, have in mind that I'm feathering no pixels at all, so this is a straight cut between one camera and the other. Uh, so it's really, really good. Uh, and the last step will be to increase the feather by 20, for example, and activate optical flow. So, if we calibrate the lenses correctly, we can get a perfect stitching with uh, close range, with uh, all the problems that you can get uh, in, in Mystica, sorry, all the problems that you can get in VR uh, solved properly. So, we get a perfect Zenith, uh, we get a perfect Nadir, uh, no need to warp or to uh, work separately on this camera. So always remember when you have uh, fisheye lenses to go into the one input uh, mode then center your lenses. Um, next thing we are gonna do is uh, if your camera is not supported by the software how can you stitch it? Uh, so we're gonna load a custom build camera in this case uh, sent to us by Leo Films. I really want kind of thank enough all the people that send us footage and that allow us to use to use it for these uh, training purposes and for tutorials. Uh, thank you very much. So just drag the footage in. This consists of 11 cameras. Um, taking a bit longer to load. So I'm going to move to one particular frame in which I have image. It seems that the first frame doesn't have an image. And we can see in the mosaic that we have 10 cameras that are pointing to the horizon and one other camera that covers uh, the nadir. Uh, what can I do for this if I don't have a, a preset? I can always go to stitch and use external stitch tool. Uh, in this case it will prompt me if I want to use Hugin or PTGUI, which are the ones supported right now. I used to use PTGUI, I really like its results. So by clicking continue, Mystica will generate the 11 JPEG images and send them to PTGUI. We just need to make sure we're working on fisheye lens uh, and this is really important. We don't support any other mode on PTGUI at the moment so you need to work on fisheye lens. Give it an approximation of the lens that you're using and okay. Even though if you uh, uncheck the auto mode in here, once you click OK, make sure that you read full frame fisheye in here. If not, just deactivate this and go to full frame fisheye. Uh, for a small, for a smaller focal lens than 16, um, PTGUI will may force the the mode to circular fisheye. Remember to put it in full frame fisheye. Just align the images. That seems correct. So I can just close it, save the project and continue to work inside Mystica VR. So I'm going to save it in Leo Films, override the previous one that I created and I can close PTGUI. How would I load, how would I load that uh, particular uh, project? I just need to drag it into Mystica. And I start from the same point uh, that PTGUI finishes. Um, in this shot, I also want to show you that sometimes Mystica can fail to, um, to, to detect the seam areas. Mystica is uh, optimized to work with uh, close to square images, one-to-one -one images or four-by-three three images. In this case, the, this rig uses 16 by nine images. So we need to do a slight adjustment really quick. Uh, I want to put the camera overlay, select camera 11, and I want to reduce the overall range that I'm taking from this camera. So I want to bring all the scenes down to this line. I can do that by just using the weight parameter which will take weight of this camera. And real quickly I can fix that issue. Now we can continue as we did before. So unhide everything, again go to match color, in this case, this isn't using the GoPro protein cube. This is using 709. For uh, natural looking images, you can use either Rec 709 or sRGB, which will be the closer ones. 
Uh, after that, we're going to increase the feather to hide all the errors. And if you want, you can also use optical flow. Um, we've seen already uh, a few different rigs, a uh, few shots with freedom. We synced uh, shots. We did a time lapse. Uh, we did a shot with the set cam. Uh, uh, many different options for a couple of options for aligning the horizon. There is uh, one other thing that we that I can show you. I'm just gonna jump with shift clicked to the second shot and the activate optical flow so I, that it runs much faster. Uh, it will still give me a couple or three frames per second with optical flow if I activate it, but just for the use of the webinar, I don't want to be waiting for that long. It's not that I'm tricking you guys. Um, so if we take the feather down and go to different positions, we can see how the color matching changes. In some occasions, in which the light conditions change, we may want to use a dynamic color matching. So I can always uh, click on match color in time, setting the step to whatever I want. I want to do it every one second, so every 60 frames and hit match color in time. Right now, Mystica will be going through those frames and showing me the result of those frames. I can stop it at any point, and it will keep the process that is already done. Uh, so now I'm matching in time, so any changes uh, on lighting on the scene will be corrected properly. And I'm going to just uh, cancel it. Uh, bring the feather back to where it was and another thing uh, that is really useful is the manipulators on the output camera you may think why do you need a uh, temp and team controls on the and explosion controls on the output camera uh, when we do color matching we do uh, we bring some cameras down and, and take some cameras higher so if you want to keep all the range of the image like we can see there that the sun is a bit blown out I can just drag it down and recover all that information before exporting. And as I usually work on ProRes, uh, we can hold all that information without losing any detail, any detail. So remember always to adjust the final exposure of the shot before exporting so that you don't clip any information and the guys down the line working on VFX or color grading can, uh, can use all the information on the shot. Um, I think that's uh, a really quick run of the of the whole Mystica VR. Uh, one thing I haven't shown you is the exporting shots, but what it's really simple. So I can go to File, Export, and in this case, I will usually do export all the shots. The ones that have an in and an out point uh, will be constrained to that range. The ones that have nothing will be exported from beginning to end. I want to do it in QuickTime, ProRes, uh, with the audio in movie for the ones in which I click the audio. If you haven't clicked the audio on them, you won't have any audio. And just click on export and it will start the process. So right now it's doing uh, 6 frames per second. Uh, I, won't, I won't let all the renders finish in, but this is what you will see uh, when, render, uh, should, when releasing the render. Um, so I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Um, it's time for questions. If you have some, just write them down in the, in the chat options that you have in there, and I will be happily answering all of them. Uh, don't leave right now because we have a, a, a nice surprise for you guys for attending the webinar so after the uh, Q&A I will give you that, that surprise. Um, any questions? So I have a question from uh, Thomas Hayden, I think you're working on the demo version of the 
let's hide some interfaces in here so that I can read all the questions. So, from Thomas Hayden, I have uh, my export option is grayed out. What am I missing? I think you're working on the demo version of the software. The demo version cannot, you can play with all the tools and see how it works, but uh, we don't have uh, export options. You cannot render out your shots. Uh, you will need to subscribe uh, to the software. Um, Javier Sanchez uh, asks if this is just stitching. Yes, this is stitching. Uh, if you want to clean the tripod or do stabilization for the moment, you have to go uh, to our compositing software. Claudio Domenicali, vector scopes and waveforms. Uh, we are thinking about it. Uh, they're not there yet, but uh, they can be added at some point. Uh, that that is on an, on the fetch feature list. Um, could I add text or VFX? Uh, no, Javier. This is actually just the stitching. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so you, for the moment, the the thing that we are trying to do this, you you know, we we launched this software uh, a bit more than a month ago. It was uh, one month in beta, uh, and we want to really really improve the stitching tools and have the best stitching tools. Once we focus on that and solve all the problems of stitching, uh, we will think into adding more features to the software. Um, Rodrigo King, King Church, sorry if I don't pronounce the, the names properly. Is double stitching possible? Yes, uh, you can do double stitching. So I can show you, for example, if I want to do a uh, different stitching on this shot, I can just uh, save the state of the shot as a preset, so save preset. Uh, I'm gonna call it 01, so it appears up, up. And I'm gonna reload those cameras. Uh, Freedom 360, those clips, I can reload them there. I, I just need to load the preset that I saved before, and I'm in the same situation. move the camera as to where it corresponds um, that one goes there that one goes there okay uh, and now you can modify for example if you want to do for uh, foreground and background images you can use the convergence option so for example the classical inside uh, shooting inside a car you can always converge closer to the close objects in the car, uh, and then converge further uh, to the to the uh, objects outside of the car, like the road and the all, all, all those options. Um, some other questions from Claudio. I had problems stitching with Mr. Gaviar with a column quite near to the camera. One meter and a half edge points were no useful because with Omni it was between two cameras. Um, what we always say is uh, there are some limitations. Optical flow is not a um, uh, optical flow is not a magic one that will fix all the shots. It will help you. Uh, I haven't seen the shot. If you still need to deliver that shot, you can always share it, in, and I can uh, give you my views on how to fix it. Uh, but we're not trying to sell you that with this software, you will fix every single uh, shot in the world. Uh, how and where does it differ from AVP? Uh, I can say many, many different things. So speed, flexibility, control of the cameras. You have full control. You can change all the parameters. Um, you can apply optical flow to every single rig in the world. Um, so, I mean, you have to try it for yourself. Uh, I prefer to use Mystic VR, but coming from me, it may not mean not, uh, too much to you, so use it for yourself and, and see uh, how it works for you. Uh, Rodrigo asks again, sorry, uh, we can create the double stitching, but you have to combine it in a compositing software. You can create the two different plates, uh, but at the point of combining them, you need to combine them in a different software. Um, Any other uh, any other questions? Uh, 
So um, I hope you enjoyed it and it's uh, why need the folders have underscore. Uh, I assume you are talking about the naming of the sequences. Uh, yes, I. Sometimes uh, you can you can have a spaces and Mystica will be happy. Mystica VR will be happy with them. But I forced myself from the beginning working in post to not use any weird signs like uh, admiration marks or or things like that. So my whole I mean the last. 15 years I've been working with computers and trying to keep it clean um, uh, with some uh, uh, particular characters Mystica VR can get lost so I would always recommend not to have any weird characters um, is it Claudio uh, asks is, is it possible to export the stitching of Mystica VR you can share the, all the stitching metadata with uh, any other Mystica software. So you could uh, load it into Mystica Ultima and do your finishing there. Um, uh, but we cannot share it with, uh, main, I mean, you cannot export it from here and load it into ABP or, or Nuke or whatever. You, you can load the metadata into a Mystica Ultima and continue your, your stitching there. Uh, if you're going to do finishing on, on Mystic Own, for example. Um, I have Gen School, which actually is remind me uh, one thing that I haven't explained properly, which is I have a hard time to load again all the sequences I was working on. Normally, one pops up when loading uh, a whole workspace. Um, I understand this is a different approach from other softwares. Uh, the auto-loading of the sequences is on our feature list, but we are really working hard to develop the best tools. Uh, so now whenever you load a project, you will also need to go to File, Load Sequence, and load the sequence that you want. In case I'm just going to save this one, so you one again. So whenever, whenever you uh, open a project, uh, you will need, you will find a blank space, and you will need to go to Load Sequence and load the, the last sequence that you saved. Sorry for the hassle, but this is how it is right now. We're working hard to, to improve and to uh, make uh, all the feedback that we come in available to you. Um, uh, yes, uh, Jenny is asking if the webinar is recorded. Uh, so yes, the webinar is recorded and you will, it will be uploaded uh, really soon to Vimeo. Uh, we will share the link so that you can watch it as many times as you want. Optical flows reacts to passing object in Windows. Any parameter to avoid that? Uh, there are a few parameters. That's a question from Rodrigo. So there are, if you go into the optical flow folder, there are a few parameters that you can touch. Um, again, uh, optical flow is a computer trying to understand an image. Uh, that's hard sometimes. Uh, you, in some shots, you're going to have artifacts and you're going to need to paint them out um, uh, but if you want to change some things, uh, the, the, the usual things that I change are the range, uh, which is from small, medium, larger, or even larger. Uh, uh, so if the pixels, if, if the pixels are too separate from each other, so if the parallax is too big, you may want to want, you may want to change it to even larger or larger. Or if the parallax, if the parallax is too small. Uh, you may want to go into small or medium. And then iterations is how many times Mystica tries to refine the optical flow. Uh, and in here, everyone is asking, okay, I'm going to say 1,000 iterations and then it's going to be perfect all the time. No, it doesn't work like that. There's a point in which uh, by trying it harder, 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 it won't find any better solutions. We find out that 25 is a good... Uh, uh, number that gives us a, a, a good performance and solves many options. Um, uh, sometimes I, I put it into 50, try 60. Usually going higher than 100, that doesn't give you a better result. And have in mind that uh, if, I play, if I put 50 in here, it will drop the performance by half. So be careful with the iterations parameter. Um, Let's let's uh, see more questions. What is the highest resolution for output? Right now is 16K. 
16k uh, so you set that on the project itself so if I go to project settings I have all the resolutions that we have right now HD 2k UHD 4k 6 7 8 12 and 16 Uh, you will need to find a rig that does uh, 16k, Janie. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what is the hazard? Uh, that one I have already uh, answered. Sometimes the other does not render along. Have you encountered similar problems? Uh, Jens, uh, yes, there was a, a previous version. Have you working with the latest uh, build of the, of the release? Uh, if not, just check on, the, on, the, on your personal area of the website check the downloads and, and download the latest version because uh, a couple of versions ago there was a, a bug that will uh, fail to export the audio. Um, Rodrigo asks about stabilizing possible in the future. Uh, everything is possible in the future. So maybe stabilizing will come, maybe not. If I say yes, I may get punished. So I, I cannot promise anything. But we're working on many, many different features to, to improve the software. That one I can say, Rodrigo. Uh, Rodrigo is asking if we have Undo Redo. Undo and Redo is on its way. It's the next feature that we want to release. Uh, and I hope it's released really soon. So if you have any, if you are already a user of the software, uh, we have a, a group in Facebook uh, which is called Mystica VR Users. Try join there and give us our feedback or go to the SGO forums and give us our feedback. It's, it will be really appreciated and we will really take it into account to future to in, in, improve the software and try to give you the best uh, features that, that we, we can. Um, if you don't have any more uh, questions, I'm going to go and show you a little present that we have for you just for standing by with me with the webinar. Uh, so if you are like the, the software and, you wanna, and you're you happy to, to, to purchase it, you can use a WebVR 2706 code and you will get a 20% percent of your first payment uh, and that will work either for a monthly or an annual subscription so uh, if you're looking into a stitching software that will solve uh, difficult shots um, uh, give it a go and use the code you will save uh, a few bucks um, I hope you enjoyed it uh, and anything you need find us on the on the forum or on the Facebook group and uh, we will try to answer as quick as we can. Uh, thank you very much.